and it is preparing. It'll just take another second or two. And you are live. All right. Thank you, Eileen. Uh, welcome, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, oh, do we have a quorum? Um, we do. Oh, Peter. Hey, yeah. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. All right. Before we get started, uh, I'd like to welcome you all. And I do need to uh, read uh, something very quickly before we get started. Um, or actually, as part of our start. Um, okay, here we go. So, um, just call the meeting to order. So, I'm going to take roll call. So, I see, I keep going back and forth. So, you, Vern and Brad and Peter. Hello, Peter. And Eileen's on the call. She'll be assisting us uh, with our um, meeting uh, in the next, uh, our short meeting for the afternoon. All right, so um, call meeting. Uh, so due to the, I need to read this now. So due to the provisions of the governor's executive orders in uh, dash 25 dash 20 and in dash 29 20, which suspend certain requirements of the Brown Act and, and the order of the health officer of the County of, of, of Sonoma to shelter in place to minimize the spread of COVID-19, the uh, SRTBIA uh, will be conducting today's meeting in a virtual setting using Zoom webinar. Committee members uh, or board members and staff are participating from remote locations and are participating uh, in participating appropriate social distancing. Members of the public may view and listen to the meeting as noted on the city's website and as noted on the agenda. Members of the public wishing to speak during item during the particular item uh, public comment or during our public hearing items which uh, will be uh, able to do so by utilizing the raise hand feature uh, their hand or pressing uh, num um, star nine on their phone they then will be given the ability to address the, the board uh, do we have, uh, let's see, it says here announcements, uh, public comments. Um, uh, do I stop there? I, I, Eileen, do I stop there? Can't see Eileen. Sorry, I, I muted myself and I was talking. Um, I, what we have next will be if there are any public comments that are unrelated to today's item. Okay, um, here we go. If you wish to make any uh, comment via Zoom, please select the raise hand button. If you're dialing in via telephone, please dial star nine to raise your hand. Each speaker has three minutes. A countdown timer will appear for the convenience of the speaker and viewers. Please make sure to unmute yourself when you're invited to do so. Your microphone will be muted at the end of the countdown. Recording secretary. Um, at this time, we do not have any raised hands. Okay, great. All right, so um, basically we just have one item uh, this afternoon. Um, we'll, 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 we'll be talking about the uh, minutes from our previous meeting at the September meeting, as well as a follow-up to that application that was uh, that is being considered and that was discussed uh, back at that previous meeting of a few days ago. Uh, but the item that we have on the agenda today is um, is item number three, which is the review and approval approval of the 2019-2020 annual report and the 2020-2021 work plan. Um, hoping that you all have had an opportunity to review uh, both the report and the work plan. And Eileen, I I think we are going to have uh, the report appear. Uh, on the screen. And um, again, as I mentioned, hopefully you've had a chance to, to review it. It's not a very lengthy uh, document. Um, we do uh, started it off with uh, some information pertinent to COVID. I didn't necessarily want to go that heavy into it. Uh, we had a pretty decent year uh, as of 2019. 
it's very unfortunate that now we're in, in this um, on, on this chaotic situation. Um, but, you know, the report, it's demonstrating that uh, there are lots of accomplishments and, um, you know, it provides a pretty good outlook on what the hospitality industry did in Santa Rosa during the year of 2019. Um, so uh, page five uh, highlights um, the assessment actuals by quarter. And we do report uh, the quarter for 2020. Uh, we might have the information related to quarter two, but again, um, you know, even though the city's fiscal year expands over to uh, June 30th of 2020, this is Santa Rosa's fiscal year as for the entire 2019. So at next, next year's uh, report, most likely, obviously we'll report uh, more information related how COVID has uh, impacted um, our, our industry here in Santa Rosa. So um, the table below that assessment actuals by quarter is the um, program expenses. And that was in the uh, previous draft uh, that we uploaded during our last meeting. Um, the section where I go into tourism uh, economics, I honestly take a lot of that information from the uh, 2019 EDB's hospitality report. It's a very robust report. And I, um, I do uh, quote the, uh, the, the sources. So uh, on this report, that most of that information is from, from that report. Um, we do talk a little bit, of, um, oh, there's a table there on page 10 where we highlight the, uh, the TOT. And forgive me, I mean, if I'm going too, too fast here, but uh, we do report on this particular um, uh, report, uh, the 2020 quarter one. Uh, we might already have the information for quarter two, but um, we'll decide if we're going to include it or not. It's not, it, it is somewhat relevant, but um, we usually, by the time this report goes out and presented to the council, uh, we don't even have those numbers yet. So uh, we'll either include them or, or, or leave them out, but obviously they'll show up next year. Um, and then in terms of accomplishments, there was a lot of accomplishments uh, uh, conducted in terms of um, from our end. And then there's also, you see the listing there from Visit Santa Rosa. Uh, they have a section on, there's a section on, on sales, uh, marketing, advertising, public information. I think at the, the previous draft did leave something out related to marketing and advertising. So we went ahead and added, included that and as well as the uh, highlights or the accomplishments um, uh, under the California Welcome Center. Uh, there were also uh, lots of articles, so that is wonderful. Um, Santa Rosa is still uh, a destination. People love coming here and uh, we hope that, you know, this continues the trend that we have been experiencing and particularly after the uh, 2017 wildfires. Um, the section, um, Eileen, sorry, again, if I'm going too fast, page 18, uh, the shared accomplishments. I actually uh, had an issue there with formatting the table. There's another graphic that I don't see, but we'll make sure that it's on there. And then I also went ahead and uh, provided the uh, amounts that were given to Country Summer, uh, Snoopy's uh, Senior, World Hockey, uh, Battle of the Bruce, et cetera. So uh, you'll see that on the final report. Um, and then uh, the reason we wanted to have this special meeting was also to just give you an update on our, our budget, which is now adjusted per COVID. And there you can see that is um, a significant change. Um, it's been uh, reduced in some areas. And again, this will be adjusted as the situation continues to, to develop. And hopefully, you know, uh, we see a vaccine, a vaccine in the near future. And at some point in the near future, we can all go back to um, some sort of normalcy. Um, okay. And then, um, then the last item is just uh, page 
21 and 22, which are Visit Santa Rosa initiatives. So uh, Brad was kind enough to go ahead and uh, give us some of that insight on the report as well. All right, so uh, pretty much that's it. That's, that will be the uh, report that we'll be uh, presenting to the council. And this usually goes up as a consent item. Um, since we've done so many presentations in the past, um, uh, there might be an opportunity um, if, if there's some sort of question um, that any city council member may, may bring it out and ask questions about it. So uh, on August 18th, uh, we're prepared to go to the council and be, be ready in the event that they have uh, questions um, available for us. Um, so um, at this point, I'd like to um, uh, see if you have any questions or any comments, and then uh, we'll be ready to move into making a motion to accept the, uh, the report if you don't have any, any, anything in particular to discuss. Rafael, I just noticed that there's a, uh, a couple places where there's a, uh, you know, a soft copy comment on there. Um, I think it might have been something from Rice uh, or, or another person um, that you might want to just clean up a little bit. Oh, okay. So like, like on page five in the in the table, uh, twenty under the date twenty twenty Q one. It looks like there would be a comment there on a oh right on a different draft, and there's something similar on page eight. So just cleaning up little things like that. But okay. yeah. But other, other than that, I. I think it's a good report and thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think so we'll take notice of that and uh, clean it up and then also include most likely the quarter two updates since I think we we may already have those. We, we okay, have so partial we, um, for quarter two. We don't have full numbers for, for Q2 yet, but if they come in, then of course. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, so I'd like to move forward to make a motion and approve. Pardon me, uh, pardon me uh, Chair Rivero, um, public comments. So we do have um, an individual who would like to make a comment. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if there aren't any other questions from the board, I'd like to open it up for public comments at this point. I don't know who. Um, perfect. Um, just. And Mr. Fraser, you're able to speak or unmute yourself. Thank you, I have. Wonderful. Your time begins now. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to share our opinion in the spirit of cooperation to make sure that our government is transparent and efficient and appropriate. And so thank you for uh, Raphael for the fine layout of this report. <clears throat> I didn't have a lot of time to compare it to my notes from the last year's report since I just received the report yesterday. Um, but in the spirit of working together, I'll be able to come back around on August 18th to provide our commentary. Okay, so on the first page, we see that it's misrepresented what the BIA is. It's actually a self-assessment on the lodging facilities. Uh, on the page under the effects of COVID, we note that there's a 12% um, worker filing for unemployment. It's inter interesting that it's as low. We, it's horrible that it's anything, but there it is. It probably underlies the difference between hospitality as far as tourism and hospitality as far as residents and essential workers. And so in the second last paragraph, you draw that corollary and that's probably not as correct. Um, the boundaries, um, okay, but it's worth noting here that the people that are ensnared in this taxation scheme are not included on the board. Uh, in fact, you should attach a copy of the ordinance so that the council members can see what's going on. Um, there's no mention of how the, the composite of those rooms and who brings what to the table as far as hotels and motels and what have you. The, um, there's no o ROI on this. We see that over $15 million was spent on the scheme so far, and there's not really a whole lot to show for it. Um, the 
uh, we have, we'll have questions about the event support and attraction. Uh, it's good, Raphael, that you're going to list the events uh, and the money they received. Uh, if you could also include the room nights that they submitted for those uh, disbursements, that would be helpful. Uh, on page six, we see merchandise sales. Typically, merchandise sales are, at, are treated like a gross uh, income or net profit or something like that. Usually also hand in hand with merchandise sales is inventory. None of that is present here. We do see cert certified folder contract fees of $6,000. That'll be important in a minute. Uh, on page seven, there definitely are changes uh, to the boundaries that are coming from the public as well as changes to the method and basis for levying the assessment. Uh, you're right, the next few pages of eight, nine, 10 just seem to be cut and paste materials from your overlapping partners, Sonoma County Tourism and other sources. Um, pages 11, don't have a whole lot of faith in your ability to have branding deliver an ROI. We get into the visit Santa Rosa area and we would certainly have concerns about whether the information is factual and correct, especially when we get to the 50,000 visitors at the center, that's 140, that's 140 people a day on average. <laughs> uh, the top articles tend to be just work product from another overlapping agency. And like I said, it'll be great to see what's going on. Also on the budget amounts, the HR or the personnel costs should be broken out of those uh, budgets uh, going forward, as well as the budgets that you're reporting on from your financial performance. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time, and there'll probably be more than with the with the report submission. Thank you, Mr. Frazier. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Frazier. All right. So at this point, I'd like to move forward and uh, pass a motion to approve. Uh, this um, report, as well as the work plan for 2020-2021. So moved. Okay, somebody want a second? Brian? A second, yes. Okay, so uh, motion is approved to move forward with the um, uh, annual report uh, for SRTBIA 20 at 2019 to 2020, and to accept the work plan for 2020, 2021. Um, thank you. Motion passes. Uh, oh, all those in, in favor, sorry. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Okay, motion passes. So uh, that adjourns our meeting. Uh, thank you all very much. I'd like to welcome you all to be at the August 18th um, City Council meeting and uh, provide comments if you wish to do so. So thank you all and uh, stay safe. Thank you, Rafael. Yeah. Thank you.